Welcome again to Rent's Life with a Y. Because nothing is good is, is nothing is, is, is as is valuable as feeling good. Nothing is good. I'm really bad at these tests. It's all cool. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by me. Sure is. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you know, <laughs> according to Chris Cressers, the Paleo Cure, your body needs 45 micronutrients for proper physiological function. Suboptimal intake of them will contribute to disease and shorten lifespan. I did not know that. And, and now I do. Vegetable oil and sugar account for 36% of the average American diet, and those things are completely devoid of nutrients. Huh. More than half Americans are deficient in zinc, calcium, magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin B6, and vitamin E. Nearly a third are deficient in riboflavin, thymine, folate, vitamin C, and iron. Iron? Yeah. That's a lot of... Those are a lot of things. The only ones I really got out of that were zinc, riboflavin, and... Iron. Riboflavin. So, to... Um, Today we're going into uh, micronutrition. We did the macro. We ran out of time. Today we're going to do micronutrition. So we're going to recap on a little bit, a little bit of that just so we're up to speed. Um, seeing as some of these podcasts may be taken just for one rather than in the order. So today's outlines, we're going to do a little intro. Uh, we're going to retouch on the micro, macro, nutrient density, bioavailability. We're going to add RDA into that. You want to guess what RDA is? Uh, no. Recommended daily allowance. Nope, wasn't gonna, that wasn't even close. Yeah, we're gonna recap the example we went over uh, in the macro one and why they're important. Then we're gonna do mo the moments. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put my phone on silent. And, hold on. Yeah, there. And then uh, we're gonna go into some details on the specific macronutrients. Now, I read one article online. I don't remember. It might have been healthline.com. They said that there was 18 micronutrients that were necessary. Cresser says 45. Hmm. Pretty big difference. Yeah. Like double. More than double. Yeah. So, going back. This isn't about food, but the building blocks of food and how they relate to our bodies. The two most important things on how food relates to our bodies is nutrient density and bioavailability. But before we can talk about the building blocks of food, we got to talk about the building blocks of the body. Ooh, makes sense. Because they are, in fact, one and the same. There are some things that come right in and we could use it. There are other things we need to break down and reconfigure into what our, bo our body knows what it's doing. Man. We've evolved for millions of years to kind of do what we do and take the food we eat and make it, you know, get there. All these intersections are the intersections of, of wrench life. And, uh, you know, lifestyle plays into that. DNA, epigenetics, we'll talk about all that crap eventually. Wrench Life is about navigating these intersections. Right? Yeah. So as he said in the last one, generally you eat a fairly, fairly regular amount of calories per meal. Mm -hmm. How much you get from those calories beyond the energy in them is dependent on your food choices. Like we said, 36% of Americans get... No. Americans generally get 30%. 30% of the calories come from vegetable oil and sugar. Yeah. Yeah. So, which That's is devoid. Good. So, you're saying over a third of the average American food intake it has no nutrient value in it. That's awful. And it totally makes sense because they're eating stuff that is nothing but energy. Yeah. It's all this is energy to burn, and they're not burning it. And then no nutrient value. So, it makes sense why we're all fat and we're all sick. And sad. Yeah, among I don't I don't have a statistic on this. Although I should I should have looked it up. In America, the most uh, fat segment of Americans are, are people that live in poverty. Weird. Yeah. The the, the yeah the it's a cra it, like if you think about it in a, in a in in the history of the world, mm -hmm. it's like it's insane and it's pro it's like you know it's one of those good problems to have I guess where yeah. the poorest people in our country are are fat. Yeah. So it's not a matter of access to the to food. Like we we have more than enough food. Yeah. 
It's just eating shit. I mean, shitty how much food. that is just like <clears throat> the subsidization of like corn products and stuff. And how well, yeah. It's just, just what's I mean, available. If you were to go even a hundred years back in history and say the biggest problem facing the poor people in America is, is going to be obesity. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? What a weird Like, thing. how do you even explain that? Like, go to an alien or go back in history and be like, all right, here, here's the deal. <laughs> It's you're going to be so poor. It's the year 2016. Fat. Donald Trump is, in, is the president, and everyone that's poor is fat. Like, huh. What? You mean they're not dying of disease? Like, Well, they're trying to with the anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Did you see that meme? A couple people shared it, and it was like, uh, it's like millennials or, yeah, millennials in school. Why the hell do I need, need biology to graduate? This is stupid. I, this is never going to apply in real life. And then it's like, next tile. Vaccines cause autism and the earth is flat. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we're like, uh, we're not eating Tide Pods. At least we're not that dumb. And it's like, man, it's both pretty Jesus dumb. Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> moving along, um, you know, how much nutrient density you get within your food is based on your food choices. Like, you know, this really nothing really that terrible about uh, a nice bacon cheeseburger really if it's if it's whole grain if it's decent bread and it's decent beef and it's decent bacon and it's actually real cheese that's not really that terrible of a meal which especially is, if it's like uh, correctly sourced like a yeah. sourdough grain too yeah or, and, and if like, it's cuz the sourdough breaks down that uh, the the gluten a little bit and if they're potatoes that are cooked in a good fat if the fries aren't even that bad either, assuming you're, assuming yeah, the caloric a... intake isn't too too high versus yeah. what you're doing, you know, because the problem with the fries is is a is a lot of ca- calories. Yeah, the but, f- the McCann's it probably has the healthiest fries then. Yeah, they're, they're fried in tallow. Yeah, grass fed tallow fries is. Oh, that sounds so good. Have you had them? <laughs> I I don't think I have. Pretty solid. But well, uh, most restaurants use hydrogenated vegetable oils that's I, I don't know i don't think you could twist it anyway those are pretty bad yeah oh yeah <laughs> for Actually, sure every restaurant uses the same crap yeah i mean there there was a restaurant using duck fat for fries for a while which is pretty cool Oh, duck fat's good yeah get some cla in there yeah congelated little like acid yeah um all right anyway what do we say where am i where am i at here Oh, like we, uh, the analogy was the macros, which is the carb, fat, protein, are like the gas in the tank, and the the micros are the lubricants and the fluids, right? Mm. And some of the most nutrient dense foods are salmon, kale, beef liver, shellfish, egg and egg yolk, garlic, blueberries, avocado, sardines. These micro uh, both rich both. Oh. Nutri- just in general. In general, dense. yeah. Dense. Well, because it kind of falls into the same category. It's it's like a macro to micro uh, ratio, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, one of the big takeaways from the macro one uh, relating to bioavailability was water soluble versus fat soluble. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, no, that's macro. No, micro. Jesus Christ, Dave. <laughs> Takeaway. Eat fat in every meal. Yeah. Right. Um, I have a little more about that later in the podcast. I, re- I did some research on that, and I got some statistics. We'll get there. Um, so now, the example I used in the last one, I'll just bring it up again. Uh, so kale is an excellent source of vitamin K. It actually has a 1,000% of your DRI, or RDA, daily recommended intake, or DRI. recommended daily allowance. But if it isn't eaten with fat, that actually drops to zero because vitamin K and vitamin A are both fat soluble. So if you eat like a kale salad with an oil dressing, would that It'd be great? That'd be good for you. It's one of those things like the the oldest traditional salad dressing is just oil and vinegar, and it turns out that the oil plays a crucial role, and actually the vinegar actually helps start break down some of those molecules before it gets into your into your stomach, which mm. helps. Um. And like I said, uh, in the last one, vitamin K uh, helps blood clot, clot, and it's actually a cofactor in calcium use. So if you're eating a kale, if you're eating a bunch of kale and you don't have a source of fat, you're not unlocking any of that vitamin K, which is going to affect your blood. It's going to affect your bones. You're getting that calcium 
but without the cofactor of producing it into the calcium you use, you're not getting it. So it can explain why so many vegetarians and vegans end up being anemic, why so many vegetarians and vegans bruise easily because their blood's not clotting when you have a when you have some sort of contusion under the skin. Hmm. And again, it explains why people that eat bitch ass food have bitch ass bones and then they break real easily. Hmm. Sorry to swear, but you know, you know. <clears throat> What are those memes? Some of y'all didn't. Some of y'all ain't eating nutrient dense food, and it really shows. <laughs> it's not even a meme. It shows. Um, so some of y'all eat uh, <laughs> clappy hands. Memes, yeah. So uh, it's the RDA stuff. So this is this is new information here that wasn't in the last one. This is a big point. Cresser points out in uh, the Paleo Cure um, is that RDA right how the FDA comes up with RDA is based on the amount of nutrient required to avoid acute what freaking word is that? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how I did that. It's uh, to avoid, oh, deficiency. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what my guess was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, RDA is based on the amount of nutrient required to avoid acute deficiency symptoms over a, over a short period, not an extended period, short period. Uh, okay. Right? Cresser goes on to say, we actually don't r really have a great understanding of what you need over an extended period of time. Mm. So anything, you know, you should certainly be aiming for more than what the RDA is. Okay. Right, so they're saying, you know, if yeah. over the course of, you know, six months you're not getting X, you're going to get symptoms of it. Mm -hmm. If you say you're, you're getting, you know, less than half of that percent, or whatever. If you're only getting three quarters of it, we don't know how long that manifests or if it doesn't manifest. We don't really know. So the rule of thumb is like, well, why not just get more than enough? Like yeah. there's virtually no, a couple of the minerals, there's harm in going overboard, but like. Like iron and magnesium or whatever. It's hard like to get. Heavy metal ones, right? Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, heavy metal. No, nothing wrong with heavy metal. Yeah. Um, another thing to take into con consideration is that the bioavailability is almost always lower than what is actually in the food because of the complexity of digestions. So, oh, because you're losing some of it as it breaks down. Yeah, like if body. it's saying there's two thousand milligrams of whatever in the food, yeah. you don't know what the bioavailability is, and your your stomach is going to break down all these molecules, and it has like a hierarchy of what we need first. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, something that's a cofactor for X that your body is prioritizing because you're deficient, it might completely inhibit inhibit your ability to get whatever. You know, hmm. I know that sounds really vague, but it's a super complicated thing. So a really cool thing in Cresser's section about bioavailability, and this is in the Paleo Cure. Uh, this is a great point. I love this one. Is uh, This is just the example he uses about how nature and evolution has found ways around bioavailability issues. So we actually, uh, we cannot unlock any nutrient density in grass. Hmm. Right? Can't eat grass. Your dog tries to eat grass, it just throws up, right? Yeah. We've all seen it. It's because the cellulose, we cannot break down cellulose. Mm -hmm. That's why there's the whole joke, like you eat corn, you poop out corn, yeah. kernel. Because in the in like the shell of the corn kernel, it's a lot of cellulose, oh. and you can't break it down. Mm -hmm. So you can avoid that issue by cooking your corn hmm. further or just making sure you're chewing it thoroughly. So you're Because the stuff inside the corn, well, this corn's not a whole lot in corn anyway. Hmm. Fun fact, corn is grass. Yeah. Most people don't know that. Just tall grass. Yeah. <laughs> so, LOL, poop out corn. So, this is this is the cool thing. So, there's a, there's a certain... There are certain animals that have a ruminant stomach that evolved specifically to break down grass. These are these are not omnivores. Like these are specialized cows. eaters. Cows, yeah. All they eat is grass. Mm -hmm. And they have a big-ass stomach with multiple t section... Or... Sections? Yeah. Yeah, sections. They got like three, seven stomachs or something. Something like that, yeah. And uh, so what we did is like, oh, well, well, let the cow do the work. 
The cow has this crazy evolved stomach for eating a specific diet of corn. It breaks down the nutrient that's grass. super dense in grass, and then it gets stored in, in the fat, and then we eat it. Oh, that makes sense. Because we can't get it. So <clears throat> it's essentially like a lot of the micronutrition that's in good quality meat, you know, pasture-raised, grass-fed stuff, all those trace elements of micronutrition from their diverse diet get stored in a more bioavailable place, a uh, more bioavailable compound for mm-hmm. us. So that's pretty cool that, that is pretty like, sweet. we figured it out, yeah. nature figured it out, you know. Have you ever seen the cow that they put a window in? When, uh, fun fact, in my early BMX travels, yeah. we were once in Raleigh, North Carolina, riding street, and there was some sort of event going on, and there was one of those cows with, like, the hole in its yeah. side. It was a straight up. It was like a weird, like it looked like a gauge, like a big ear yeah. gauge. Yeah, and like they put a plug in it. Yeah, there was no <laughs> plug in it though. We could oh. just, we could, we like rolled rolled up and back in the day in the flip phone day, there was a a Nikon brick phone that had a flashlight on it. My buddy had it, so we like shined it in the in the cow's stomach wow. and shit, and it like smelled real bad. Huh? And I was like, what the hell is that? That's fucking sweet. Yeah. Back. Funny what BMX can teach you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, then we eat the cow. We've un- we have the ability to unlock plentiful nutrient in hyper plentiful grass without the massive stomach required to do so. Hmm. Like some people will use um, gorillas as like an argument for veganism because gorillas don't eat meat. And they're wicked strong. But they have like this massive gut yeah. for breaking. And they spend like, it's something crazy, like 10 hours a day just chewing because they have to break it all down before it gets in there yeah. and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, tell every vegan, you know, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be fine without any animal products. You just need to have a gut that's twice as big. And they're like, oh, pass. I don't want to be fat. That's yeah. worse. That's way worse. Give me that steak. <laughs> Give me that steak. Give me that monkey steak. They got like the the, the napkin tucked yeah. in and the knife and the fork. Hand it over, baby. <laughs> Ready. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Moving along. There's one thing on the infographic here in the middle of it. There's a little clock. So when we talk about uh, micro versus macro, macro is relative to day. Mm-hmm. Almost even within like wind hour frames, you know, mm-hmm. if you're if you're doing a lot of strenuous cardiovascular exercise, you want more juice to burn, right? Of course, it makes sense. You're burning fuel, you fuel up the tank. The micronutrition is more of like weekly. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need all of the micronutrition every single day. I'm sure there's a each. I'm sure there can be comprehensive studies done on each and every single one to figure out how it falls out. But generally speaking, it's like over the course of the week, you want to make sure you're getting all these things. Like uh, another one of those cool traditional things, uh, like Catholics eat fish on Sunday, mm-hmm. right? Fish is super good for you. All those omega threes. It's like one of those things that I don't know who figured it out at what point in time. It's like there's a wealth of knowledge in 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 religion and in the Bible. And there's a wealth of nonsense too, but yeah. that's one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, makes sense. Eat fish once a week. There you go. Or like the fasting in some <clears throat> religions. Oh yeah, fasting's great. I don't know why they call it fasting. It goes by so slow. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Where are we at here? Oh yeah. So that's a, to say that m- macro. Sorry, to say micronutrition is more of like a weekly time scale isn't to say like some meals you could be like, whatever, screw it, all sugar. Like mm-hmm. you should just always be aiming for as much nutrient de- density as possible. You don't need everything in every meal, but you should get it often. And one other fun fact I could throw in here for you is um, it's actually what it comes, phytonutrients is uh, uh, what this nutrients in plants, phyto, like photosynthesis, phytonutrient. Phytonutrients are really complex and hard to break down. So it's actually better for you to eat all of one vegetable in one meal than to mix it all up. Hmm. Like rather than doing like the same stir fry every night, it's like one night all broccoli, next night all carrots. I don't actually do that because I don't know, I just eat so much vegetable. I think I'm I'm kind of okay with it. But I could see transitioning into something like that. because you're just like the the phytonutrient compounds are so complex. You know, they call 
they call plants like the great alchemists because there's mm -hmm. just it's such complexity and it's pretty difficult for us to break it down that's why the in the macro one even we we're saying that vegetables are carbohydrates but it takes so much energy to break them down it's actually not a, a net yeah. gain of carbohydrate yeah, yeah. it's like a break even kind of deal that's cool i wrote here elaborate and that's what i just did cool <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's see here. What do I got here? Another fun fact from uh, Chris Kresser's Paleo Cure about n uh, ma micronutrition is that nutrient deficiency at a subcellular level mimics the effects of radiation and chemicals on your DNA. It actually causes breaks in the strands of DNA and oxidative lesions. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds bad. It actually, and those things will affect your body's ability to function normally. Hmm. So those things with methylation and fasting and all that stuff, it helps with your, on a DNA level, sub, sub cellular level, while well, eating garbage food and not having the right nutrient density can <clears throat> cause damage. And then when the methylation is repair is replicating damaged DNA, it's just going to, it's basically like speeding up mm -hmm. aging. Ooh. Cool. So I'm going to go through a couple little fun facts about macros. Micros? Micros. God damn. Then we'll do our moments. <laughs> I think the second half after the moment. Actually, let's just do the moments and then we'll jump back in. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. You want? You got a moment for me? I think I have a moment for you. I got, I got, I got a beautiful moment. moment. You want to go, you wanna go with, with the beautiful moment? Yeah, beautiful. Oh, there it is. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. That's the one. down to a shorter version of it for the moment and keep the longer one for the intro we'll That's get there later idea. why don't you go first blaze give me your beautiful moment of the last whatever yeah uh i <laughs> i deadlifted 300 pounds on monday oh. and it felt great and then i had a near miss of 352 or 42 that's a pretty big jump eh yeah it's weird because i so i did the 300 with the bar which was a good, it was a heavy climb to get up to and felt really stir sturdy. But then my, my goal I've had for like a month now is I want to pick up, there's two 176 pound kettlebells mm, and Jesus pick Christ. up one in each hand. And just because it was the end of a whole day of testing those mm. muscles at that deadlift position, I missed it. But I got it off the ground like this high. And it felt pretty great. So wow. next time I'm warmed up for so it. You've been building that one up and then you just like... Wow. Yeah. So it felt good. Yeah. Uh, even though I missed the one, it was it's something to keep working at. So hell yeah. Yeah. My beautiful moment was um, last week. I'll say this week because whatever <laughs> doesn't matter. I went out. Um, beautiful day. Is first ride after I tore down the mountain bike and built it back up for my uh, spring summer setup. Just like in the, I was just so pumped. It was nice out. It was warm out. I was just like railing it. It felt so good. Mm -hmm. And I went to rail that one segment. It's a really steep hill climb. It's like there's two there's two segments. And one's a, a tenth of a mile. Uh, and then the other one is the same thing but longer. And it's a quarter of a mile. Mm -hmm. And it's like super steep at a turning point there. We normally ride down it. Oh, when we okay. come, we will like come out of the top section and, and like rail down the hill and then turn left onto the boardwalk. Oh, okay. Oh, you came up. This that segment one. is. You, it, it starts on the board. It starts at the gate, so you make the ninety degree right turn, and then, just and then up up to the top of the <sighs> steep part, and then the longer segment goes all the way to the gate up at the parking lot. Oh, jeez. And uh, I already had the fastest times on that, and I yeah. just wanted to. I was I was pumped up. It was beautiful and everything, and I freaking railed it, dude. And I looked. I got through the steep part full juice, and once it started to level out, and I was trying to keep the hammer down, I was like, I'm starting to feel tired. And I was like. Keep, keep going, keep going, you know, keep, you know, keep going, yeah. keep going. And I looked down at my Garmin, and and my heart rate was at two fifteen. Jeez, I think I saw you tweet that. And uh, you know, normally I I max out, like depending on how hard I ride, like one eighty eight to like one ninety three. 
the previous time I ever went that high, I did 207 and I gassed out so hard. I literally stopped pedaling up the hill and just dropped off the bike and was like, <clears throat> I'm dying. Wow. So this time I was like keeping the, I like was getting a little fatigued. I was getting that kind of lactic acid, acid spike. And I was trying to like, you know, keep going another, another 20 feet, another 20 feet, another 20 feet. And I looked down and I saw it and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like I'm at 215 and still pedaling. Wow. Now I don't, I didn't always ride with the heart rate. So I don't know if that, like, if that's uncommon or not. Just, it's only within the last, the end of last season and this season I'm doing heart rate monitor all the time. <laughs> but like. Would have been interesting to see your heart rate before you got more conditioned to that kind of riding. That kills someone. Yeah. I mean, if you if you if you pushed yourself like if a normal person that doesn't do cardio pushed themselves to two fifteen, like their heart might explode. Like really? you almost certainly would have a heart attack. You're, <sighs> like if you're, over, I shouldn't be able to do that. If, when you're in your thirties, you're like the safe max is like one ninety. Oh wow! And I told uh, <laughs> Harry's mom who's a nurse. I was like, that's what I did this week, and she's like, Dave, that's dangerous. And I was like, come on. And I was like, I so cardio conditioned. Yeah. I hit. I'm in the one nineties like. Multiple regular. times a week. So yeah. It's only a little bit of a push. But it was like, what a freaking rush, dude. Like, the sun was out. Fresh new bike. I didn't get the KOM. I didn't get the time. <laughs> uh, which is interesting, because I would like to know if the other time I did it faster, where my heart rate was. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe if your heart rate was lower, you would have had a better time because you would have more what's well, an interesting juice. new statistic i'm going to be playing with in my riding is like when i enter a section of trail i want to rail how low because you're gonna you're gonna instantly just climb it up yeah. so the lower you enter that you theoretically the more you could hammer down till you reach that spike i don't know huh. pretty interesting though yeah it was it was awesome i did the I didn't eat too, so this was like fifteen hours into fasting. <laughs> just ridiculous. <laughs> I did like did the whole loop, and then the last segment I derailed was from the very top, like you cross the bridge and you come into the park, and it was like basically from the park all the way to get to the elephants. Mm -hmm. It's like three miles or so, and I just I tried to keep the pressure down for that one. I didn't get that one either, but that was like after all that other stuff, mm -hmm. I did this strenuous longer segment, but like, it kicked my ass, and I was just. Who was on cloud nine all day, man? What a freaking rush. It was great. It's a good feeling. Oh, hell yeah. Pushing yourself to that level. And I'm like, I was just pumped because I like, I didn't get any, uh, I didn't set any personal records on any sections. I was just be up, just below a bunch of them. So it was like, it felt great and I got a great workout, and it, but, it, but it's like, oh, right, well, I get, to, I get to do it all over again. And that is a beautiful thing. <laughs> oh yeah. That's great. Fuck yeah. It's great, dude. I'm trying not to swear. Um, you have a angry moment? I got a bunch of them, but I don't know. <laughs> you, an angry you have a weeks. chaos moment or angry moment? Uh, I got my complaint about work, but <laughs> that's like, that could be a whole thing. Mm. I don't know. Most, most of work is just like angry and sad. I had Sometimes. a... <laughs> I didn't have uh, like a crazy, crazy one, yeah. but I did have a, a moment um, recently where I was very upset and frustrated and I really couldn't understand why, which is usually really, really ra rare for me because I mm -hmm. like, have a very good understanding of myself and everything. And like, I don't want to go into details because it's like pretty specific and it's like whatever, but basically the girlfriend did something and it like, it really doesn't matter. But it like bothered me, mm. and then I was just like, like there's obvious like lot like simple logistics. It's like oh well that's just silly, mm -hmm. but the, the to the level that it actually like upset me, like didn't make sense like to me like I was like why, like I'm sitting there like perturbed, and then I'm like upset I'm, like why am I even like upset like there's like a huge part of my brain that's like oh well it's relatively doesn't actually matter so why do you even care and then i was just sitting there and like it didn't make things better because i was like in my own head trying to figure out what the hell was going on mm -hmm. it was like it's just so bizarre how like things can happen like that it's, it's been a it's been like two days now and i keep playing it over my head over and over and over like playing through every detail well there, here's all of the possible reasons why this would bother me 
Mm-hmm. And it still doesn't really add up to the level of response I had hmm. to it. I can only think it's in response to losing my hat. <laughs> I lost my hat. Yeah. That's my angry moment. Uh, I should tell you about that one. That, that's a pretty good story. It's not that angry. I'll, I'll play the sound because why not? I use that to... Sh- what? Side note. I'm not allowed, I'm not letting myself listen to the ceremony and pound out chicken cutlets anymore. Some of them were pieces. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm just sitting there with the with the with the meat hammers, like yeah, oh, pack a fistful of hate. No, I hate cutlets. I'm sick of this. Makes me angry. And I, I pulled the, like the, the plastic up after. I'm like, ooh, those are uh, not so good. <laughs> Felt really good though. Why do you beat the cutlets? Uh, make Ten. them more even. Because if you look at the chicken cutlet, the bottom side. The bottom of it is thinner than the top part. Okay. It's, the, it's like their breasts are this whole mm. piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of breasts. Mm-hmm. And so you just pound them so they're even, so they cook evenly. And they're, they're a little bigger, so they look a little better, too. It doesn't, is it make, doesn't make it more tender or anything? Chicken breast is pretty much as tender as it gets anyway. Yeah, it's true. So Very true. It's, there's, you're not really... You, I guess, in a sense, you are pounding out some of the muscle fibers. You ever grab a woman's breast and it feels like a bag of sand? <laughs> You ever touched a breast before? <laughs> but um, yeah, so I was at a a a uh, death metal show last night. Very very soothing uh, mindfulness training, just blast beats. Uh, I do that. It's cool. It's whatever. Uh, I decided I wanted to get in the pit. I was on the edge of the pit, and this pretty rowdy crowd. And you got the arm out, whatever. And then eventually, I was like, dove in on it, and the first. Slam in the pit. My hat flew off. Never saw it again. Do you get another one? Dude. I love that. It's $36 for a trucker hat. That's a lot for a trucker hat. I know. It's made in America, though. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was thinking about... Going over there. It said they open at seven tonight, but they don't have a show. I don't know if that like their bar is. Yeah, that's what I was saying the other day. I don't know if it's an actual if it's a bar or not. Yeah, so I was thinking about going over there later and just being like, "Find a hat." Do you have a lost and found? And they're gonna be like, "No, it's, it's everything a... that's left here gets thrown into trash." <laughs> I'm like, hmm, same. Even the bands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that hat. That was yeah. the no one cares that you ride a single speed hat. Yeah, that's a good hat. That's a good hat. Yeah, it's a bar. It's a good know. show, though. Yeah, I wish I could have gone. But I guess my angry, I don't know, I've been like, just just angry after, angry and sad all the time. Mm. Not quite, same like what you're saying, not quite sure why. I think I need to get back on that CBD. I was doing good for a couple of weeks, doing the dropper. A lot. Of, I feel like a lot of times things just add up on you, and it's like, um, maybe like it's an exponential thing, like, there's a, like we all have like a some sort of threshold and it's like we can handle five things that bother us but when like the sixth and seventh thing pile on like God it's damn, like still my sharpie this, it's over <laughs> <laughs> it's the straw that broke the camel's back and then you just have like a, a bigger uh, mental or even physiological response that it's hard to even understand because it's like a there's like a I guess a threshold is the only thing I could think of that makes sense. That's kind of what this morning was. I uh, didn't sleep so great Friday night. Didn't sleep great last night. And I woke up and... Why don't you sleep good? Uh, this, I think the last two nights the girlfriend was over. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, I just... I do just, you generally not sleep yeah, good? Yeah, I sleep like garbage all the time. So it's not her fault. It's just... How? It's, like, do you just wake up frequently? I don't think I even wake up frequently. I just like... Never, I always wake up feeling like just total garbage. And I think a lot, I, I realized it might be like sleep apnea because I have gigantic tonsils and I probably mm. just don't breathe at night. But I never like wake up or snore, so mm. I don't know. How do you know if you're snoring? Huh? Hey, girlfriend, she'll tell me. I think she tells you the truth, please. I would hope so. <laughs> About that, I tell her when um, she's snoring. She's like, what out. you <laughs> might consider trying as an experiment is getting uh, blue light filtering glasses. Hmm. and put those on, you know, like maybe two and a half hours before you think you're going to be in bed. Because you're in the kitchen, there's, you're getting blasted and bombarded with white light. Yeah. And that's going to be sending that response to your eye uh, that, you know, we'll go, we can go all into circadian rhythm in another one. But that would be, a you know, to buy a 
pair of like nine dollar blue light filtering glasses and just to throw them on at you know nine thirty every night or whatever it, yeah. it could make all the difference you know huh. when i put mine on like after they're on for like an hour and a half like my eyes get that tired feeling like oh. you, know, you need to be in bed feeling and like yeah. you know, like that weird like yeah yeah huh. i never have a problem sleeping knock on wood like thank god like yeah. i always sleep great always well you do that thing where you're just so goddamn active that you can't <laughs> not be that tired and i try yeah. that like i'll go to the gym i go to work i ride my bike to work and i try to be as active as i can but then i get out of work i try to play like, timing well too like yeah. which might be harder for you because like you go right from like kitchen full board cleaning up to end the day and then you're trying to like get to bed like, yeah i pretty much like play out my window to where like when i'm just getting to that like i'm ready to fall asleep i try to jump right into bed you yeah. know try to pace it out but once in a while, you overshoot the window. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's a, it's, I think I gotta, I'm going to try and go to that. My dad goes to like some sleep center thing, and I think it'd be worth trying because mm-hmm. it's always been a problem. But the blue, I'll get those, I hope those glasses. Good shot. It might be weird. I mean, this is blasphemy, but you might, you know, it's, well, I don't know. You said you didn't drink for a little while, right? What? You said you didn't drink for a little while? You took like, a week off? No. No. It's funny because the people that don't drink to be like, oh, you quit for a while. You didn't drink for a week. The people that don't drink, they're like, what the hell? Yeah. But the people that are drinkers are like, wow, a week off? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, it, it's, I drink far less frequently because I don't work at a place that feeds, uh, that yeah. doesn't supplement my paycheck with beer. Hmm. <laughs> like it, I, I don't know. I, did, I have a beer maybe a couple oh, times okay. a week now. It's like, it's, it, I don't think it's the booze quite as it, when I was drinking a lot, that definitely was a factor. Mm. But do you night shift on your phone turned on? Yeah, good. I think so. Usually, when people say they have trouble sleeping, to me, I, I, my first two go tos are the basics: like be on a regular schedule, limit blue light exposure at the evenings, and try to get a blast of sunlight as soon as you wake up. Yeah, because you have this whole system between uh, um, what is it? Cortisol and melatonin is like this kind of yeah. flow thing you got to kind of regulate. Did you listen to that sleep expert on Rogan? I didn't, That's but he was really uh, he one. did one with um, oh, okay. Rhonda. That's but a really good one. I was gonna rewatch that Rhonda one and take a whole bunch of notes. It was super dense. Like I might have to go through that one like three times. That's how everything with Rhonda is. I know it's great. She's a low DMT. Key. She's a low doctor. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump back in yep. here. <clears throat> a good tangent. <laughs> So, uh, micros, uh, I'm going to give you a little info here. This is from healthline.com. Uh, basically, your micros are vitamins and minerals that are necessary. Necessary? Necessary. Necessary. Necessary for everything, right? They're called micros because your body needs relatively uh, microscopic, <laughs> the smaller amounts relative to macros. That's why they're micro. Mm-hmm. Like, very minimal amounts, like tiny right um humans must obtain micronutrients from food since their body cannot produce these vitamins and minerals otherwise uh for the most part that's why they'll call them essential nutrients the same way they'll call like essential fatty acids or fatty acids we can't create okay vitamins are organic compound compounds that are made from plants or by plants and animals that can be broken down with heat, acid, or air, essentially. So plants and animals make them, and through various ways we can break them down. Stomach acids will break it down. You can cook it to help break it down. Air, I guess, might just be better for meditation. I don't know. Hmm. On the other hand, minerals are inorganic. They exist in the soil and the water. They cannot actually be broken down. Like with the mineral, you take it in, it's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Vitamins, we convert them and mess with them, and our body does what we want. The mineral, you get copper, you just get your copper. Hmm. And copper is a micronutrient. All right. So when uh, when you eat, you consume vitamins uh, that plants and animals have created or minerals that they absorbed. So you can actually, the minerals that you'll get in, in meat is from the, the plant that they ate, hmm. and they got it from the soil in which they were grown in. Huh. So it's all the way down. Good soil makes good plants. Good plants make good animals. Good animals make good food that good people eat. And if you don't, you're not a good person. (laughs) Then, then listen, like with fish, there a lot of fish are high. Like bottom feeding fish are high in like 
uh, like heavy metals and yeah, stuff mercury. Like that. Mercury, yeah. Yeah. So they get them from little fish that eat little. How does it work in those? Usually with fish, the the higher up the food chain, the compound, the mercury compounds and just higher more and more. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, I believe cold water fish are less likely to have uh, mercury. Hmm. But I don't know a ton about fish. I don't really eat fish. I don't like jam bands. Me either. <laughs> it's annoying. Yeah. I listen to um, a lot of jam bands lately. That's super whack. Yeah. Um, so, continuing on, this is also from Healthline.com. Micronutrient content is different in every piece of food. So, it's best for your health to eat a wide variety of foods which would expose you to a wide variety of vitamins and minerals, right? An adequate intake of micronutrients is necessary for optimal health mm-hmm. as each vitamin and mineral has a specific role in the body. Mm-hmm. Vitamins and minerals are vital for growth, immune function, brain development, and many other important functions. Depending on the function, certain micronutrients also play a role in preventing and fighting disease. That would probably play back into the immune system thing. So, this second half is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to basically be listing a bunch of the nutrients, uh, essentially what they do, and in some cases where you can find them. And uh, none of them are in sugar or vegetable oil. (laughs) Bummer. So, we're going to start with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 B vitamins. The ones that vegetarian or vegans can't get, right? That's 12. Oh. So, vitamin B1, which is thymine, helps convert the nutrients into energy. That's uh, whole grains and meat and fish, common sources of B1. B12, which is riboflavin, which is necessary for energy production, similar to B1. It also plays a role in cellular function and fat metabolization. Best sources for that, organ meats, eggs, milk. B3, niacin. I think it's niacin. That sounds right. Uh, This drives the production of energy from food, similar to B1 and B2. Meat, salmon, leafy greens, beans. B5, man, pantothenic acid. That sounds right. Necessary for fatty acid synthesis, most abundant sources. Organ meats, mushrooms, tuna, avocado. Millennials love that one. Love it. B6, oh man, how am I going to pronounce this one? Priodoxine. Priodoxine? Sounds about right. This helps your body release sugars from stored carbohydrates for energy. And it helps create red blood cells. Common sources, fish, milk, carrot, potato. It's an interesting one. Potato. See, all these micronutrients, they all play all these varying roles. Do a little bit here, a little bit little there. Super important. B7, biotin. Plays a role in metabolization of fatty acids, amino acids, and glucose. Eggs, almonds, spinach, sweet potatoes. So a lot of these B, these B, pro, B vitamins really help you break down uh, fatty acids and sugars and, and carbohydrates. So if your diet is pretty high in those things but low in Bs, it's a pretty good recipe for disaster. Which <clears throat> could be a very common thing in America. B9, folate. Folate's a big one. uh, It's important for proper cell division. That's methylation. Uh, Beef, uh, liver, spinach, asparagus. Notice that I eat a lot of these things every morning. Not the organ meats. (laughs) Start start frying up slabs of veal liver, man. (laughs) Yeah, B12. This is the big meat one. What the hell is that word? Cobalaminin. Cobalamine? Cobalamine. Cobalamine. 
So that's necessary for red blood cell formation. It's, uh, it's essential for proper nervous system and brain function. That's the one, the, B, the B12 deficiency one that causes uh, irreversible uh, cognitive uh, effects. Mm. Best sources for that, clams, fish, meat, grass-fed meat, beef. Clams are a good one for vegans because they're not advanced enough to actually have a nervous system. Well, are they? That's what I hear. From what I understand that most shellfish, like oysters, clams, mussels, um, I think that's it. Uh, that they're they're basically it's they're not even advanced enough to have any sort of awareness at all, and they're just they just open and close. They're a muscle. There's pretty much nothing else going on in a clam or an oyster. It's just a muscle that opens and closes and eats. Hmm. So, it does not. They say, they say that they're like they're le- they're even less cognizant and aware than plants, and that vegans should eat those as a, a hmm. cruelty free option for these sort of like getting protein. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I'm going to look into that. Yeah. That stuff's pretty gross. I don't need it. <laughs> I'm sure it can, everything can be pre- prepared good, but... Oysters still weird me out. Yeah. We had scallops on as a special... Scallops, that's the other one, which is... I don't know if you've ever seen, like, an, like, a scallop. You know, you always see, like, just the little, like, white, you know, scallopers. They're just, like, little white. Probably. Uh, I Somebody asked me at work yesterday what they were closest to in texture they're kind of like a mushroom okay um it's just like a little white muscle mm-hmm. that's all it is it's just like a little piece but they come in these giant shells that are like this this big oh really yeah so that, that's that's a that's a what was this talking about <laughs> that's a scallop jesus oh okay so that's a scallop muscles are a little black i know muscles yeah so those guys those guys are good um I can get those kind of weird textured. Some people hmm. don't like those. I'm going to try to eat more of that stuff because it's good for you. I just don't come across it often. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> so. Let's see where I wrote B12 deficiency, long-term irreversible com- com- I said that com- cognitive damage. Uh, vitamin C, absorbic acid, ascorbic acid. This is required for the creation of neurotransmitters, hmm. creation of collagen. And uh, collagen is, of course, the main protein in your skin. So vitamin C is actually super important for skin health. Hmm. And scurvy. Yeah. Uh, citrus fruits, uh, bell peppers, Brussels sprouts are best sources. I would not have guessed that Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I wouldn't have either, C. but it's a good thing I eat them every gosh darn day. Brussels sprouts. So everything I just told you right there, they all have one thing in common. Those are vitamins, water soluble uh, vitamins, right? So, so that means you don't have to add anything to it. Your body can yep. take care of it as long as you're drinking water. The following <laughs> ones are your fat soluble vitamins. Vitamin A, which I think is retinol. I think uh, it's necessary for proper vision organ function. Those are good things. That makes sense to be retinol. Retinol, Ret- yeah, ret- retinol. retina. Yeah, vitamin A is a big one. Uh, liver, fish, dairy, sweet potatoes, carrot, spinach. Again, take my breakfast. Vitamin D. Everyone knows vitamin D. It promotes proper immune function, assists in calcium absorption and bone growth. Hmm. Which is interesting because people think vitamin D is just like calcium, but it actually helps you absorb. It's like the vessel that allows you to get calcium in. Hmm. So we said earlier, which was the B vitamin that has calcium cofactor, right? One of them. I don't remember. But that's why it's good to get the whole full spectrum of all of that crap. Because if you're getting all the calcium, but you're not getting any of the vitamin D, you're not absorbing any of it. Um, so you should drink a gallon of milk in the sunlight? Yeah. Well, sunlight is the big source of vitamin D, but you also get it from fish oil and uh, milk. Milk. With vitamin R. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin E. Everyone knows vitamin E. That's the immune system run, right? So, of course, what does it say? It assists in immune function. It acts as an antioxidant that protects cells from damage. Hmm. So, uh, vitamin E. Sunflower seeds, wheat germ, almonds. Interesting. I didn't know that. 
Uh, vitamin K, we talked about this earlier. Like I said, blood clotting, uh, bone development, best sources for vitamin K. Leafy greens, like I said earlier, about kale. Kale, yeah, brother. Uh, moving along, this is your macro minerals. Macro, micro or macro? Macro minerals. Macro minerals. So, so your so your micronutrients in the mineral in the of the um, your mineral micronutrient is broken down into two types of minerals. You have macro minerals mm. and trace minerals. So okay. it's like the macro minerals are the ones you need a lot of. The trace ones you need very small amounts of. So as we were just talking about one calcium, we know that proper uh, bone structure and teeth. It also assists in muscle function and uh, blood vessel contraction. Milk, leafy greens, broccoli, obviously. Well, not, maybe not the broccoli part. Phosphorus. Uh, this is plays a. Uh, it's important for bone and cell membrane structures. I don't know what the structures are. But it's something. So that's salmon, yogurt, turkey. Not the country. Magnesium. Wow. Magnesium assists over 300 enzyme reactions in the body. Hmm. Including the regulation of blood pressure. Hmm. Which is a big one. So that's uh, almonds, cashews, black beans. Huh. Yeah. Sodium. So that's a, uh, it's an electrolyte that aids fluid balance and helps maintain blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It's salt. See. Some people are like, dude, no, you need Gatorade. It's got electrolytes. It's like salt. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Duh. Uh, chloride. Usually it's combined with sodium. They usually are paired together. It helps also maintain fluid balance, and it's commonly used in digestive juices. It's very pretty. So a lot of times chloride is in uh, in your salt, um, seaweed, celery. I never really eat celery. I'm not a big fan of celery. Kind of like celery. Uh, potassium. This is another electrolyte. Uh, helps maintain fluid status in cells and helps with nerve transmission and mus muscle function. Mm -hmm. We all know that. You know, you get your potassium after you work out. Helps with your bones. Not your bones, your muscles. Oh, I said bones. Uh, where is potassium? We're going to find potassium in lentils and squash and bananas and avocados. There's way more potassium in avocados than bananas. Really? This Healthline website where I pulled this off of didn't have avocado. I put avocado on that. Like, if you, after you go running, you eat a banana you're, banana, you're better off eating an avocado for, like, 100 reasons. Maybe not 100, maybe 25. 125, wow. No, just 25. Oh. Uh, sulfur. Sulfur is a part of every living t tissue. Mm -hmm. And it's in all amino acids. <sighs> I'm not going to read that word. Methothionine? Methothionine? Crystalline? This is sketchy. Oh, fuck. Dude. <laughs> Sulfur is in garlic, onions, Brussels sprouts, and eggs. That plays a critical role in nearly every living tissue in the body. It's found in everything that's in your breakfast in the morning. Yeah. So here's your uh, your trace minerals. We're going to give those. Uh, then I'm going to go into common deficiencies, and then we'll wrap it up with a food rule. So the trace minerals are ones you need far, far less of, but... Are still important. S still very important. Um, so the big one here is uh, iron. We've talked about iron before. Iron is what helps uh, provide oxygen to the muscle. It assists in the creation of certain hormones. It comes mostly from red blood cells. So red meat. Mm -hmm. But also found in oysters and spinach. Now we're going to break down this distinction because this is a big one. There's two types of iron. There's hemi-iron and non-hemi-iron. Go figure. So hemi. This is the big one um, with anemia and vegetarians and vegans. It, a lot of it's iron. So hem, non-hemi-iron has an absorption rate between 2 and 20%. So it could be as high as 20%. 
to be as low as 2%, right? Heme iron, or heme, might be heme, heme iron, the absorption of that is 15 to 35%. So the lowest possible absorption of like animal product iron is going to be just below the maximum possible absorption of non-hemi iron. Uh, and the account, the issue is for that, like it, hemoglobin, maybe. I'm not. It hemi, probably makes that sense. Makes sense because that'd be that'd be red meat. Yeah, and the issue there is because the uh, the phyto com the phytonutrient complexity make it's just harder to break down and get it off. Um, a, another big common issue uh, is that there's this thing called phytates. Phytates are in grains and nuts and seeds. Uh, and there's uh, tannies, which is in tea, wine, and coffee, and uh, oxalates, which is in spinach and sweet potatoes commonly. All those things will actually block uh, iron absorption. So, And the problem there is that most plant, the plants that have the most non-hemi iron also tend to have a lot of oxalates so they kind of block what you can get okay so then it gets kind of complex there because then with cooking options and all kinds of stuff like, like you have to do a whole ton of research on on just non-hemi iron and plants to figure out exactly how that's going to play out mm -hmm. super complex the, the 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 easy way around that is like hey have a, a little fatty piece of steak once a week you'll probably be all right yeah um, manganese, moving along, uh, this uh, assists in carbohydrate, amino acid, and cholesterol metabolization, commonly found in pineapple, pecans, and peanuts, hmm. all the peas, a couple more here, copper, copper is required for the connective tissue, connective tissue formation, hmm. I don't know what that is, as well as, uh, brain and nervous, sim nervous system function. Copper. That makes sense. It'd be uh, it's funny to use copper for wires and the micronutrient copper assists in neurotransmitter connections. Hmm. Uh, common sources for that: liver, crab, cashews. A lot of those uh, nuts are looking to be pretty good. Yeah. Zinc. Uh, well, everyone knows you get sick. They always take a lot of zinc. So zinc is necessary for normal growth, uh, immune function, and wound healing. Makes sense, right? Immune system, zinc. What's the thing that do? Um, <clears throat> the lozenges. Oh, coldies. Yeah. Remember coldies? No. Well, zinc is commonly found. Best sources, oysters and crab. Come back, zinc. Zinc, come back. Uh, iodine assists in thyroid regulation. Uh, seaweed, cod, yogurt, but a lot of, a lot of salt is iodized. Mm. Uh-oh, here we go. Fluoride. Ooh. <laughs> That's funny. I have a note here. So fluoride is necessary for the development of bones and teeth. And I wrote water, LOL, because of fluoridated water. Hilton doesn't have fluoride in their water. Oh, really? Yeah, didn't I tell you that? It's like there's something weird about Hilton kids, and part of it is they don't have, have fluoride in their water. It's one of, like, a couple counties in the States that doesn't have it. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. So I wonder what... <laughs> I don't know. It's just... There's always something different about Hilton kids. For sure. And... That's, that's got to be part of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, so this is our last trace mineral, uh, selenium. Rhonda Patrick talks about selenium a lot recently. Uh, it's important for thyroid health, uh, reproduction, and defense against oxidative damage. So it's like a big anti-aging one. Best sources, Brazil nuts, sardines, ham? Nice. I wrote ham, so maybe it's in ham. And then um, we're going to give you the one, two, three, four, five common, I don't know if they're the five most common, but I think they are the five most common deficiencies uh, people have in America. Vitamin D. <clears throat> Not enough sunlight. Especially uh, guess how here. many people in America are deficient? 80%. Good guess. 77% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. All you do is... Freaking go outside. It's tough. It's it's outside. I know. It's not. It's not like seventy seven percent of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. That's insane. The McDonald's is inside though. It's not even about food. That's like going outside. Yeah, but 
It's a drive through. If you, you just can get, you can get in your house to your garage to your car to the drive through to back in your house. If you just had a garden, yeah. you'd get enough vitamin D by gardening yeah, without even eating it. <laughs> but, um, next one. B twelve talked about it. Vegetarians, vegans, many of them develop B twelve deficiency from refraining from eating animal products. Elderly people are also at a high risk of B12 deficiency because the absorption slowly decreases as you age. Mm. Um, vitamin A, uh, I guess this is based on global stuff because this, this says the diet of women and children in developing countries often lack adequate vitamin A. Mm. That's interesting that it's only men and, uh, I mean women and children. Hmm. Anyway. Iron, uh, iron deficiency is the most common of the, uh, the mineral ones. Mm -hmm. It's very common am amongst preschool children. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, this, this is from healthline.com. It says, deficiency of this mineral is common among preschool children, menstruating women, and vegans. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's just funny. Just a weird combination of people and then uh and calcium i could have guessed that um 22 percent of men and 10 percent of women over the age of 50 don't get enough calcium hmm. so it's a pretty big one there too i mean if you're refraining from animal products it's going to be really difficult to get calcium in your diet and we and we broke down how hard it is to break down the calcium with this and that and all the other thing and blah 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 so this is going to be a super dense podcast, a lot of information, but whatever. For the, for the eight people that are going to listen to it, they're going to absorb, pun intended, a few of those things. 20 by 2020. 20 by 2020, yep. <laughs> Last time we actually forgot to do a food rule because you had to go to work. Yeah. This is weird. We're filming this podcast in the evening. We're always in the morning. Yeah. But whatever. Pretty good. Are we going to do two this time to make up or just one? I do not have the work. I no, I mean the, the food rule. I know we don't get two. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we'll just do one food rule and apologize to our eight listeners. So now it's down to seven. Sorry. Not enough Not enough uh, of my work drama for Matthew. <laughs> I haven't heard uh, your podcast with the work stuff just went up, mm. and I haven't heard back from Matt. I was, he probably hasn't listened to it. I'm sure he's going to text me and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out Matt Smith. This podcast brought to you by the Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get down there, or he's gotta come up here for sure, dude. Do a PA trip. Yeah. Oh, geez. I think we did rule three. We're on to rule four, so we're gonna we're gonna end it with a food rule. Michael Pollan's book, Food Rules, an Eater's Manual. You want to read this rule, please? That's it. <clears throat> it's a good one. Avoid food products that contain high fructose corn syrup. Mm. Pretty simple. Like Genesee beer. I know. It bums me out. Let's see. Yeah. I have this, I have this bottle of Coke right here. For the, it's for the other podcast, Breaking Free Speech. Do um, you think there's high fructose corn syrup in this? The question is, is if it's the first thing or not, because <laughs> it, you know, they, they rate it, they, yeah, yeah, yeah the ingredients are listed in the order. Well, of the which... first ingredient is certainly going to be water. You think so? There's definitely more water than high fructose corn syrup in this. I don't know. <laughs> first ingredient. Water. Carbonated water. All right. Second, Second ingredient. High fructose corn syrup. Second ingredient. Caramel color. Third ingredient. Phosphophoric acid, natural flavors, caffeine. This is just oh. sugar and water. This is a lot of sugar in it too. No, it's, it's the second second thing. Yeah, but how many grams is it? I don't know. Not a lot. Four point two. Yeah, that's not that. Four point two grams. Yeah. Go on, guess how much sugar is in this? I think it's something like thirty. Keep going. Sixty. 65. Wow. You ever weighed out 65 grams of sugar? That's no, what would that look like? It's probably like a pool like this big. Like the a quarter cup? Half cup? 
No, that's not that much. Mm -hmm. Half cups, like. So a cup, of, that's like 200 grams. Wow, that's like eighth cup. Yeah, something like that. Wow, that's a lot of sugar. Well, thanks for checking it out today, guys. Had a good time. That was a little bit dense. I think I'm going to try to, like, scale back these podcasts and make them less dense because it's just so much information. I think maybe a looser, more shooting the shit format might be a little bit better. I don't know. We're it's still tough, figuring it yeah, out. It's I think we'll find that balance between, you know, getting all the information across and having it yeah. be digestible. You've got to add some avocado to make it a little more. <laughs> a little more digestible. <laughs> Someone's gonna be like, dude, I listened to your podcast. The, uh, you know, the uh, the information density is really high, but the availability is pretty low. <laughs> brain availability. Brain, if there it is. Yeah, my brain availability is pretty. Oh, I touched the thing. They're suffering from brain fog because they don't enough B twelve in their diet. Yeah. All right, so that's going to be it for today. Um, thanks for listening. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. That's Wrench Life with a Y. There's nothing as valuable as feeling good. It's WrenchLife.com. Wrench Wife. At Wrench Your Life for the Instagram. Keep wrenching it. Feel free, time. feel free to tag us in an Instagram story when you're wrenching your life, and we'll, we'll share it for you. Yeah. I'm going to make that... Uh, Pulled pork tonight. Sweet. I'm pretty pumped on that. I'm gonna eat a piece of steak, I think. Oh, I have a. I have pork chops in the fridge. So I'll probably get the pork chop tonight. Slow cooker later. It's the thing you gotta do the, the long haul cook and have something for while it's cooking.